believe not only are women's sports under attack, but women in general are under attack. Science is under attack. Logic is under attack. Misogynistic attack on not enabling and not understanding that people that are biologically female are as entitled to fair sport as people that are biologically male. I think this is, has to be some sort of tipping point. For centuries, movements have fought for women's rights. The right to vote, the right to drive, the right to work the right to be an equal citizen. But in 2023, the definition of being a woman is under attack. A new wave of society wants to break down genders and rewrite the definition of what it means to be a woman. In sports, in advertising and mainstream pop culture, women are fighting back, protecting the rights that generations before them fought so hard for. Sky News Digital presents The War on Women. Thomas wins the NCAA championship. Ended up very close for second with Wyatt taking it ahead of a late charge from Erica Sullivan in third. It was the race that sparked controversy. Transgender swimmer Leah Thomas winning an elite level college swimming championship. Thomas's victory sparked a bigger conversation around women's rights in sport. I believe not only are women's sports under attack, but women in general are under attack. Science is under attack. Logic is under attack. But what's happening is to women is we are being erased. We are not allowed to be mothers. We're hearing comments in the media that say, man can give birth. What kind of message does this send to women? We are special, we are different. And to all the young girls that are working so hard and we're taught the future is female, that message has been completely erased. So when these girls that are working hard to become the next Olympic athletes are seeing their victories just completely destroyed by men competing in their sports. So it's really hard to watch and this war is raging. And when you listen to the mainstream media or print here in the United States where I am, you think that we are the small minority, that we are doing something wrong. And that's actually not true. We are the loudest voices amongst our other conservatives, but we get silenced and drowned out. But if you look at polling data, NPR just did a recent poll and it said that 63% of people do not approve of men competing in women's sports. And that's a staggering high number almost two thirds. So you know what? We are the ones that are on the right side of history on this issue and we just have to keep fighting for our women and girls. Former Olympians like Sharon Davies and Caitlyn Jenner have been outspoken in the fight to protect women's sports. When I was competing in the 70s and the 80s and we had the East German doping era, that was very much limited to sports like swimming, track and field and rowing. And obviously it was it was limited to elite, you know, events like the Europeans, the Worlds, the Commonwealth Games, well, not the Commonwealth Games, actually, it was any time I didn't have to race them, um, but the Olympics. And so it didn't, you know, it didn't really um, mess up local co competitions, it didn't mess up nationals, it didn't mess up park runs, it didn't, you know, mess up school sport. Um, whereas the problem we've got now is it's being ignored that biology exists and that females have had such a battle in the world of sport to get any sort of parity. And we still have no parity. I mean, here in the UK, about a thousand women earn no living from sport, 11,000 men you know, earn their living from sport. I'd imagine it's pretty similar in Australia. Um, in, in America, for example, females get 1% of the sponsorship dollar that comes out of sport and 4% of the primetime airtime. You know, we have such a small piece of the cake and now we're not even allowed to use the reality of biology as, as a reason why we should have protected category. And we have categories in sport to offer opportunity across the whole of society. So, you know, we have age categories, we have weight categories, we have para categories, and we have sex categories. And of all of those, sex is probably the biggest one where it offers the biggest difference. And Olympic competition, we know that's anywhere between 10 and 30%. So the more explosive an event, the bigger the advantage. Something like boxing, uh, a male of equal weight, will hit a female 160% harder. And that's onto a less bone dense, you know, bone structure. So you're gonna cause some serious damage in contact sports. And so in something like, you know, rugby or hockey or football, it's a serious accident waiting to happen. So with my history of the East German era, where for a very long time, the IOC allowed 
the East German institutions to tote their young girls and put them through male puberty. And then they went on to absolutely dominate. I saw it firsthand, you know, how that impacted female sport, how many of my friends didn't get on the podium at all and would have been Olympic champions had it not been for three East Germans who through no fault of their own had been given testosterone whilst they were, you know, young girls. Um, and now the advantage is even bigger. You know, the, the advantage they worked out was about 9%. And as I mentioned, you know, it can be anything up to 30% in something like weightlifting. I, I have always tried to protect women in women's sports. Um, I think it can become terribly unfair for women. And honestly, I don't want to destroy women's sports. Uh, we had the big issue here mm. in, the, in the States uh, with Leah Thomas um, last year. Yeah. And honestly, we won that battle. Um, uh, eventually, uh, world swimming uh, went to ban. You basically, they said you had to have had transition before the age of 12. Why? Because the big thing is not so much hormone levels later on in life. Uh, it is, did you go through male puberty? Um, mm -hmm. Leah Thomas had big hands, big cardiovascular system. It was just totally unfair and it had to stop. And we won that battle. Again, in track and field, Sebastian Coe, head of uh, World Athletics, uh, came back and said, hey, he takes fairness over equality, and basically banned trans athletes uh, there. Uh, then here in the States, <laughs> good old Joe Biden, uh, Title IX here in the States mm -hmm. is started back in the 80s. It was great legislation to build women's sports and fairness in women's sports with men's sports. Um, if the soccer team, uh, men's soccer team got, you know, 10 scholarships, Title IX says the women's soccer team also has to get 10 scholarships. And they did that. It went through. And honestly, here it raised the level of women's sports in the United States. Um, you know, these young women got great educations. It was just very good. Well, with all this gender ideology going around right now, Joe Biden, the Democrats, have been on the wrong side. Joe Biden's been on the wrong side of every issue ever. Um, and he said <laughs> he's going to change Title IX. Yeah, he's going to take Title IX. Mm. And, um, and not like for women, but basically your gender identity, who you think you are. Um, that would be the end of women's sports in the United States. Um, and it just can't happen. And as these issues mount, these figures like Caitlin and Sharon and anyone else who dares speak out is vilified, attacked and called transphobic. So I do think the conservatives are silenced across myriad of issues. What happened to Riley Gaines in San Francisco was terrifying. I think she was held hostage basically for three hours. And then when the police got involved, they really did not help her. They said they were big allies of the trans community and really couldn't do much for her. And that does send a scary message. It, it absolutely does. But there are different ways to show your displeasure. Look what we've done with Bud Light when they hired trans Dylan Mulvaney to be their spokesperson. Look at Target when they had tucking bathing suits for Pride Month for young boys who believe that they are girls. The stocks of these companies absolutely plummeted. Their value absolutely tumbled. So our voices can be heard and will be heard and are having an impact. Although the left uses scary tactics and actual physical violence in many instances, I think we continue to fight the way that we know how is the way that generates real change and hit them where it hurts and that's their wallet. It's an issue with simply saying, why are females not worthy of fair sport? We have 18 peer reviewed studies in the world and not a single one of them shows that we can remove male puberty advantage. And the last one was in September of last year, which came out of Brazil. And that was after 14 years and it was one of the largest. So even after 14 years, we can prove that you cannot remove that biological advantage. So why is it okay to say that women are supposed to line up at the beginning of a race with a known disadvantage? To me, that just seems absolutely crazy. I just cannot get my head around that seems like why that seems okay. So let's find better solutions. You know, I'm not transphobic in the slightest. I have friends that have transgender children. I believe that it must be horrendous for anybody, whether it's their own child or whether it's you know yourself that has dysmorphia. However, that should not impact the opportunities of females to have fair opportunities in any field. So let's find better solutions. And I believe the only sensible solution is an open and inclusive category. But if it's extra categories, then let's talk about that as well. 
But, you know, the debate has been deliberately stifled for a very long time. And anyone that tries to say, can we have debate based on science, is called every name under the sun, is deliberately cancelled, is deliberately made for them to be, you know, their work to be really difficult, their families to be targeted, just for saying, why are women not entitled to fairness? We have seen countless examples of trans athletes winning women's competitions. This image went viral after a competitor looked upset after losing her race to a transgender competitor. And it's not just sport that is seeing the deterioration of what it is to be a woman. Recently, a transgender woman won the beauty competition Miss Netherlands. She will now compete for the crown in Miss Universe. I think so. I think this is, has to be some sort of tipping point. We see transgender uh, women named as Women of the Year in America. We see what's happening within sport. And look, I'm no great supporter of beauty pageants, and I can beat you though there, Chris. I've actually sat through a Miss Universe uh, a night in, in LA when I was reporting for Channel 10, and it was one of the longest nights of my life, I can tell you that. But I can tell you, we were sitting there listening to their answers. We weren't actually working out, you know, what particular biological sex somebody was. But no. look, I think inevitably you've got someone now who is transgender who owns Miss Universe. I believe that there's another transgender woman who is also competing in the Puerto Rico competition shortly. So it could be trans versus trans in what is you know, traditionally a woman's competition. Yeah. I just I just think it's sad. And where are the voices from women? Exactly. No All this is... Uh... It, no one is really up there fighting for it. The breakdown of what it means to be a woman is underway as the woke left try to rewrite biology. It's a misogynistic attack on not enabling and not understanding that people that are biologically female are as entitled to fair sport as people that are biologically male. So we have the World Anti-Doping Agency and their whole job is to stop people from taking illegal drugs, including testosterone, to gain the tiniest advantage. And if that was removed, men would have a real problem. And we've seen through history, you know, whether it's the introduction of, of racing suits in swimming or whether it's carbon shoes or whether it was Oscar Pistorius who wanted to race the able-bodied athlete with his blades, that men, when it affects men's sport, get this thing sorted out very, very quickly. They believe in fair sport and they want fair sport. When it affects women, they don't care because on the whole, sport is run by men. And, you know, this has been going on now since 2015 when the IOC changed the rules. Um, and it took seven years before any international governing body asked a single female athlete how they felt about this. So, you know, even if you're a person that's sort of in the middle of the road or kind of liberal, all those people have daughters too. And when they see something like this happen to their young girl, when they're losing at sports to a biological man, I think it is starting to wake up people across the spectrum. And this will be a unifying issue because that poll I just told you about said that Democrats, Republicans, and independents all basically agree to a different level on this issue that men should not be competing in girls sports. And if you want to take it a step further in the locker room, we see that these men entering women's locker rooms are assaulting women. This has happened in a high school in Virginia and all over the country. We see little girls in these locker rooms that have been unfortunately seeing men's genitalia and it's terrified them and it's been sometimes intentional by the male adults. So these are the issues that impact you no matter how you fall on the political spectrum. And there's no way to spin these as good things that are happening for families and young girls. Even the word woman is under attack when it comes to language, with the term often removed. The Johns Hopkins University definition yesterday, they've changed their definition for a lesbian. It's, it's not a woman who's attracted to a woman anymore. It's a non-man who's attracted to a non-man. Oh, God. I mean, this is the depth of our cultural despair, Chris, where you just can't call black is black, white is white. I mean, it's such... It's a real sign of just a completely confused, declining society when, when it gets to these levels. What I find always fascinating about the transgender debate, it, it, it eleva elevates the subjective experience. You know, I identify as this. But then the solution is medical science physiologically changing you. So there's an absolute contradiction there, and, and she's pretty much highlighted it there where she's just saying, this is my subjective experience, it's my truth, uh, yet the, the answer is medical science. Yeah, I don't think any of us uh, complain about anybody identifying in any way, but it's when they demand that we accept something that is not physically reality that it's a problem. And, Claire, with this debate going on among adults, and it filters down through social media and, social, and, and, and I suppose, popular culture and everything, is it confusing kids, most importantly? 
Uh, it is confusing them. Can I just point out, Chris, just on that redefinition of a lesbian, and I, and I commented about this today online, um, the thing that makes me furious about that is that they didn't change the definition for a gay man. A gay man is still described as <laughs> a man. No explanation needed. But as a woman, we're reduced to, you know, the absence of maleness. Like, it's just the womanhood is gone, you know. Um, yeah. And it is confusing for kids. You know, I'm not, there's no way I want my kids known as kind of chest feeding non-males. Meanwhile, the US Centers for Disease Control and Prevention quietly scrubbed the term women and woman from their guidance for flu vaccines during pregnancy. Replaced with gender neutral terms like pregnant people, there or erased entirely. And those terms chest feeding, birthing person, what do you think they, using these terms um, a lot is saying to women and what do you think the effect of this will be if we keep allowing this to happen? Well, I, first of all, I don't think we should use their language. You know, we have to continue to use the language that identifies with who we are. We cannot be forced to communicate in the way that they do or then we fall victim to their narrative. And if we don't stand up for ourselves, no one will. And like I said, this is a way to erase women and just put us in a box that we are all the same. And we are not, and we are very, very different. And if we don't continue to stand up for ourselves, no one else will. And I think that the left has done a great, great job of scaring a lot of people. If you don't fall in line, if you don't use their language, if you don't say the right things, they will call you a transphobe or a bigot or a racist. And you have to realize I am strong. I know who I am and my values. I will not allow myself or my daughter to be treated this way because women must not be erased. The term mother is under attack at the moment. As a mother, how does that make you feel? It's personally so deeply troubling to hear that we are not allowed to celebrate motherhood and womanhood. You know, we give birth, we are not birthing people, we are mothers. Men cannot have babies. XX chromosomes and XY chromosomes indicate who we are fundamentally. We are not assigned a gender at birth. We are born a boy or a girl. And when you see these attacks on what we're capable of doing as a mother, it just shows they don't care about who we are or our individuality. And that's also a tenement. You see that happen very e easily and early in socialist nations and communist countries. They want to strip you of your individuality. Everyone is exactly the same. And you have to think about that sort of rhetoric when you think about what the left is doing here, because mothers should be celebrated. Women should be celebrated. Differences are not bad, they are good. And I do believe that we need to really send a message to the left, we will not subscribe to this. And that's why we have to make sure we support products that align with our ethos. You know, and, and it's really important because especially with baby products, you see, wait a second, this diaper company is supporting Planned Parenthood or this company that makes baby clothes doesn't align with my values. And that's why there's companies like Public Square that are, you know, really launching and becoming a competitor to Amazon that has companies that align with our values. But as women, we want not only our values to be celebrated, but our individuality and enough with this rhetoric. We are women. We are not birthing people. We are not chest feeders. We are not menstruators. We are women and we are mothers and we are very important and we are very special and we are very different and that's perfectly okay.